to support New Zealand arts. Opera is the ultimate theatre. It involves drama, dance, music, all of those, those sorts of things. There's no doubt that we have some of the healthiest voices that you can get and also um, the most emotional voices. What we've needed is the sense of history and tradition that brings with it intelligence. And once we've got those three things, then I think our, our opera stars are going to be unbeatable. These young opera singers are taking part in the first New Zealand Opera Summer School in Whanganui. All hope to follow in the footsteps of such greats as Kiri Kanawa, Donald McIntyre and Malvina Major. With no full-time opera company in the country, opportunities for aspiring singers to develop their careers are limited. Yet a surprising number of New Zealand singers go on to make it on the world stage. You know, in Europe, you've got all these countries, one on top of the other, you see right from a little child the standard that there is around you, and maybe it's a bit scary. Here we don't know that. We don't know how good we are until we get out there and pace ourselves with the rest of the world, and by that time we're so keen and so dead enthusiastic that it doesn't phase us anyway. We just get going. I don't know. That's only a theory. The school was set up by the Dame Malvina Major Foundation. It offers singers an intense two weeks of teaching and performance with top international tutors. Our idea was not to give scholarships to young people and send them off overseas into the big wild no man's land and get them lost. It was to bring the tutors here and, uh, and obviously tutor to a lot more people, you know. Non chiedo, legato, imploring. International opera coach Madame Virginia Zayani is giving a series of master classes. A former diva of the Italian opera, Virginia Zayani usually teaches at Indiana State University. The quality of the voices is very special, you know. Probably the, fa the fact that you are in an island, you know, the voices are pure, are nice, and the characters are very good. And uh, I think that it's easy to work with them. You cannot, after this long breath, it's not a record. I was very lucky in my life because I sang for 34 years in 67 different roles, all leading roles. And uh, I sang with the, all the best singers in the world, you know. I was in the time between uh, 48, 50 and 80, uh, all the greatest singers that were in Italy. Show your beautiful face to the public, to show your sorrow. My generation was the generation of Carla Stebaldi, Siepi, Christoph, Nicola Rossi Lemeni, who became my husband. Pavarotti sang his first Lucia with me, he sang his first Traviata with me, Domingo sang his first Manolesco with me, and the first Fedora, and a lot of uh, debut together. I think that heaven must be probably much more interesting than our life, but I, when we are on the stage and we sing well, it's like being in heaven. I, I don't think that I could cope with something else. Only opera, 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 singing. Don't take this breath. Uh, you have to have a lot of love for people because you have to be a little bit extroverted to be on the stage. You have to give and then you have, but you cannot have before you give. She catches the enthusiasm of the New Zealanders. And we're, we're different, we have a different um, dynamic 
from Americans. Of course we do. I mean, every nationality has its dynamic. So she catches the simplicity of our dynamic and the clarity of it, because we're a little more uh, realistic, I think. Uh, they have done in these 10 days, in the first workshop that we had together, things that a lot of times in uh, another place they do in a month or two, you know. It's very important, this. Oh, she's just brilliant. She's, um, she's given me back the courage that I never really went out and got. Sometimes I'm really scared, scared performing those high notes because um, I just never had that courage to, to get up there. I like singing them, but because now I'm learning technically, um, it's all these things like breathing and, you know, shaping, you know, bring, putting your sound forward and that, you know, and when I used to sing, I didn't care about those things. It's now becoming a reality, you know. Hang on, but lifting up, here, big sound, and here, force. With Madame Virginia Ziani, she just, I need to centralise that sound and, and put it a lot more forward now. Um, it's a good sound, but it, she just, she wants to redevelop it into a stronger sound. So I can sound like Pavarotti, so she says. <laughs> As a singer, to hear recordings of her, to hear her live in masterclasses, I think is just incredible. And it's an extreme honour for me to be able to be, I auditioned for the school and I was lucky to get in and I'm very honoured to be able to be here, to, to have the opportunity to sing for it. I was too cool to sing when I was little. I didn't like big warbling sopranos or big fat tenors singing their eyes. I thought they were just sort of boring. But um, actually, I find now that it's an amazing art. The singers come from all backgrounds and are at different stages of their careers, but all are drawn to the special challenges of opera. It's movement, it's drama, it's, it's a whole idea of style, it's not just standing up there and singing. It just takes you to another plane. It's, it's an amazing feeling. It's, it's a wonderful mix of, of so many things and I think that's what really attracts me. So you can't mm. be good at just one thing, you've got to be versatile and you've got to be able to do all these things all at once. There is not enough teaching of the skills of performance to singers and they suffer from it. They, it's bad and, you know, they would all be of so much better standard if this was made a strong part of whatever curriculum they were studying. And the good singers, of course, do have that priority and some of our good singers are very committed to, to developing other skills bes beside the voice. Okay, go, go again, all of you. So, uh, split yourself into two lots. Now, so I didn't realise that in my acting it was just so sort of exterior type acting um, whereas in these movement classes I've learned to tap into my inner resources they're the ones that actually bring you out as an actor and 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 bring that 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 to your singing as well they have they help contribute to your singing feel the energy coming from the hip and the inner groin you bow you rise and as you're just risen you step back and still hold it together and I think the acting classes are fantastic. I've never ever had classes like that before. I'm always just the musician who comes in, does my thing, does some silly moves and gets away with it. But uh, these classes here have really taught me a lot about myself. Certainly the eyes, they have to, to have the color of sadness. When you are happy and the eyes, they have to be brilliant and, <laughs> and to have the joy of, of, uh, of playing with the public, of uh, taking care of the, his desire, you know to feel always in the arena, you know, you are, I am the torero and the public is the toro, so we have to, we have not to kill them, but sometimes to kill them of joy.
I suppose my singing libido, my singing drive, singing those tenor songs, I'm just ecstatic. I mean, they say on some songs, to have an orgasm is a vocal orgasm, whatever. It's just incredible. Golly, imagine what that would be like. So the short notes, Carmel, you've got to make, make love to them. Yes. Pronounce them. Sometimes the, the promising ones, it's too easy. So they don't develop a work ethic, and then it doesn't happen. And sometimes the little sloggers just keep going, keep going, keep going, and then one day there's a magic word said, and it's, ooh, it turns a key, and then they're lucky, and something happens. I think they're all promising. I think that uh, it depends on their brains and their luck and their work attitude. Those three mm. things. They could all have careers. <laughs> that when these students make it onto the operatic stage that they can bring their charm with them because if they don't then people won't fall in love with what they're doing and with who they are and with what they're singing and if they can't communicate that love then they won't become loved and famous you have to be prepared to work hard you have to be prepared to say, I've got to learn my languages, I have to have an instrument, I have to be able to play the piano and read music, I have to, you know, start at ground level and be prepared to study hard, and not try to run before you can walk. Oh. majority of them have a tremendous way to go. I, I think that they haven't found the true disciplines of singing. I think they haven't found the true disciplines of themselves and their lives, you know. There were some that I thought should be taken up instantly and who were very exciting. But um, I think there were a lot of, of singers who were in a fog, really, about what it was all about. I would say there's, there's three or four with, with a little star above their heads. And now we'll see. We'll see if they follow through. Um, I'll just try another secretary. Ben Marchisi is pursuing his career assisted by the Dame Malvina Foundation. They've helped him into a part-time job and have sponsored him in his studies. Ben's living with his parents and four brothers, which poses some peculiar problems. We used to have a piano, but uh, the front part of the house was burnt, got burnt down and the piano was with it as well, burnt down. I, I'd like to sing late at night, like 11 o'clock. And the, both my brothers are both in bed, so I have to sort of whisper, but it doesn't give you the full feel of singing. Um, if, if I was in my own flat, yeah, sure, I probably can sing my lungs out in the shower or something. But most of the times it's, it's alone in this corridor <laughs> in front of the mirror singing, trying to get the right shape and the right um, vowel sounds and stuff like that. My family are very acceptive t um, towards me singing opera now, um, they can see that it's it's a well worth sort of um, career that one can get into. At first, the decision was very hard for them, but my dad was really pleased because he loves music and he always wanted a son to, you know, go out there and do his degree in music. <laughs> Gospel music has has always been a strong point in our family. As young kids, we were whenever we were sort of depressed, we were. We always try to bring music as, as part of our lives to sort of cheer us up and make us happy again. I was plonked in front and, and my f brothers and sisters will be at the back sort of backing me up, sort of like the Michael Jackson family, you know.
Ben studied at the Wellington Conservatorium. Look at Otello. Here he joined some current pupils in a production of Gianni Schicchi. With no full-time opera company, singers like Ben keep busy with concerts, corporate performances and other appearances. Mm, mm, mm. This is the second night and this is sort of like the final performance. But you have a lot of academic people out there as well and they, they're really influential. You don't want to make a fool of yourself coming out because New Zealand's really small and word of mouth gets around that this person sings all right but sometimes doesn't get the top notes. It could basically slow down your career in New Zealand really. I think the New Zealand performers very lucky because on the whole they have more chance to perform than their counterparts overseas. Some of them tell me that they do uh, two and three hundred concerts, performances, a year. Well, that's phenomenal. Where else would you do that? Just in a society which uh, is desperate for it, and it's a small population and there's a few people doing it. Simon is also appearing at the same concert, singing the lead in Cavalleria Rusticana. But all performances are a risk, and the evening did not go as well as planned. This year's been surprisingly <clears throat> wonderful for me, as in I haven't had many major vocal diff difficulties, technically. I've, when I want to get a note, um, it was there. And I was quite vigilant about knowing where the notes were actually in the voice. But last night, I, think I, just, I just wasn't prepared. thought I was exposing my genitals out there. That's, that's how it felt. I'm like, oh my God, I've got the dog my fly. Oh. Died. Personally, I felt that I was just sort of too good. And it's never going to happen. Well, I'm not going to make it happen again, that's for sure. It was just really unfortunate and it won't happen again. It just brought me down to earth very quickly, making a fool of yourself like that. Simon finished his music degree last year. He's devoting his time entirely to music, living off the dole, a hefty bank loan, and occasional busking. I don't mind being poverty-stricken. Mr. BNZ or Mrs. BNZ with their uh, loans are always good things. Just need to wait to that big day at La Scala or Covent Garden and my fee will be able to pay off my debts for the last five years. We all live in hope. Mm. It's very costly being a singer. You constantly need to train. You know, for the rest of your life, you're going to be needing to pay out fees for pianists, for coaches, for singing teachers. It's you need to marry, a, if you're a woman, need to marry a rich, a rich man, and vice versa for, for, a, for a, sing, a male, you know, a rich widow. I, I've worked it out. If I stay in New Zealand, <coughs> um, it's wonderful, everything, but uh, it's just going to get me more in debt. I'm at a crossroads with a lot of other New Zealand young singers. This is where you say, right, I'm going to sacrifice this and I'm going to go and show my wares to the flash people overseas and see what they think. And, you know, they could easily say, Simon, you know, you just sort of don't have it. Be this, mate, there's no harm trying. So, concerning Australia, it's the next step, the obvious step, I think. They don't know how good they are. They don't know until they go overseas and get into a company or get into a situation where they're in a big uh, university with a lot of students singing and they hear them and they think, mm, you know, uh, I want to be as good as him or, or I can do better than that, you know. And then they begin to realise, also they begin to realise how hard it is to really get out there and learn. I don't see any point in trying to make some sort of career without having done all of the initial steps first and made the most of the opportunities that are around New Zealand before you go dashing off somewhere or other. I think it's very important to, to do the right thing at the right time, particularly for your voice. But I've had a fairly slow developing sort of voice, so it was important for me not to do too much too soon. It suits me as a person more as well to, to take things a little bit more slowly and build it up correctly. I'm probably the most calculated person you could come across in many respects.
For Virginia, Opera and the office don't meet. She leads a double life as tax lawyer and aspiring diva. Soon she hopes to give up law and face the financial insecurity of Opera. I did law and commerce, just for a bit of contrast, I guess. Um, and so, basically, I've ended up with a, a jolly good career that I can always fall back on, which is what everybody says. And I, I don't think I'd ever be completely satisfied just working in an office or in the court or something you know, permanently for the rest of my life because you just, you don't get that sort of feedback, you don't get that sort of satisfaction from, from that sort of work. I, I don't find I've got anything in common with um, sort of lawyers at my level now. Just, just got nothing to talk about. I'm not particularly interested either. <laughs> I want you to move. I want you to actually have some energy. Three months after the summer school, Virginia is slowly climbing up the opera ladder juggling her busy career with a part in the chorus of Wellington Opera's production of Peter Grimes. I definitely see the work side of things phasing out and singing and performing taking over. That's uh, really the way I've, I've structured my life in the last few years. Unless it's a true vacation with you, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. It's, it's, you know, it's such a hard life. Uh, I mean, and when an opera singer is disciplined, their life is really hard and difficult and, and wonderful. There are many rewards, but it's uh, a, a very committed career. Oh, lines that just go, well for me they go atmospherically high, <coughs> but it's just incredible, it's nearly the end of the opera, uh, Tosca, this is just before he's, he dies. I get up usually in the morning around Sahaba State and do a wee bit of vocal exercises, I make coffee because Pavarotti does, he always has a strong espresso in the morning, so if he does I will. All the morning I'm actually doing work, practicing languages, going for rehearsals with accompanists or language tutors or singing tutors at Vasti. I really into reading biographies actually. Just reading about their memoirs, how they started, why, when the notes cracked. Like I got old Enrico's one. <laughs> looks like Ben, I think. Incredible. There's a picture in here that looks just like Ben. It's just amazing. There. Put those two there. Ben's probably a bit bigger. Though. It's just like Enrico Caruso. No problem. July, and Virginia is preparing for the Auckland Aria competition. The competition circuit is an important way for singers to make their mark and be heard by influential people in the business. We've had two, two major competition festivals so far this year, one in Napier and one at Hutt Valley, and um, I won both the, the big aria competitions there, so it was, it was really good. And I also was awarded the most outstanding vocalist from both those festivals as well, and I won the most outstanding overall from all the, the different types of arts in the festival. So it's all fairly successful really so far this year. Meanwhile, Simon and Ben are about to go to Sydney to compete in the Sydney Aria competition and also to check out opportunities in the Australian opera scene. The greatest thing that you two boys can do, if I may say so, is to be the best friends all your lives. <laughs> both famous and singing on each side of the world please come back together and sing together <laughs> now those two boys they need to consolidate their repertoire to discover about themselves the capabilities the weaknesses and their strengths the unfortunate thing about our New Zealand scene is that we haven't got a young artists program tied into any of the opera companies and that in Australia is absolutely marvelous in Sydney you know those two fellows could get into the chorus in Sydney 
they could observe the professionals working, they learn their languages, they put their languages into practice, they learn the operas, they discover what they can do and what they can't do, and by just sheer um, work and discipline, they begin to grow. To go and be put in with the lions and see exactly what they think, I think that's what I want to do. Um, I'm just sick and tired of just just waiting here and thinking, oh, I should be doing this and I should be doing that. You might as well go out and try. And <laughs> if you're good enough, you make the cut. If you don't, you sort of go back to the freezing works and ash burden. Yeah. I'm not really sort of, look, you know, hoping that for the best. I'm just going in there for the experience and um, hoping that I'll do, do my best, which I will sort of try and do, yeah. Ben has given up his day job to concentrate on study and act as the family chauffeur. Basically, I can do my singing, singing in, in, inside the car, really, when I'm driving. And it's really good because I don't realise that I'm singing all these top notes because I'm concentrating on driving, so it's really amazing. Um, what's really funny, that I probably might end up crashing into someone because I'm singing a top C or something like that. Ben was last year's Auckland Aria competition winner, his trip to compete in Sydney was part of the prize. Well, it's probably the most prestigious area competition. Um, so in that respect, it'll be a jolly good one to win. And the, the prize is, is probably the, the best overall as well. So yeah, it'll be a nice one to have, but as I said, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Opera competitions are a highly technical affair. Singers must impress with interpretation, vocal command, technical ability, and choice of aria. And the decision comes down to the opinion of only one judge. I think I'm singing quite well, but um, who knows? Anything could happen. I might do something wrong, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, not exactly a precise science, so you can't really get it one way or the other. seem to have a slightly different warm-up technique to most people, which is sort of amuses people greatly. I'm all into the, the sort of primal grunt sort of approach, you see. You get all these other little sopranos sort of wandering around singing delicate little scales, and I'm sort of out there. what they're doing with the hands, you know, and you get the, the skirt scratches and the, the stomach rubbers and you <laughs> I do the dead yeah. rat where you for some reason the hand goes up like this. Yeah, and but, I, it's but sort of tonight... waving around in front, you know, yeah. this is my dead rat. I'm singing a serious <laughs> song, but I'm holding a dead rat in front of me at this particular moment. And the one I like too are the, are the thumb wigglers. <laughs> They've got no control over it. <laughs> so a little bit of palsy in the middle of an area, it's fine. I thought Virginia was the one that I, I found had most charismatic potential. I think she has a beautiful voice, which I think she's still finding and, and, and flowing up, but I think she is in charge of herself as a woman and uh, extremely beautiful to look at, and I think she has huge star potential.
Virginia is through to the final of the Auckland Aria. She's decided to take a risk with a difficult modern piece by Benjamin Britten. Typical me, I like to live dangerously. And it's Lucretia's Orchid Aria, which is basically a mad scene. I almost think that the acting and the character side of it is, is more important than the music itself, or, although the music is the drama too. It is very dangerous to do because people are impressed by it, often sort of in awe of it, but they don't necessarily like it. It's, it's an uncomfortable sort of piece. And I think if you've made your audience uncomfortable, then you've done it right. Yeah, well, that's what I tried to do more this time around. Yep. So that's what the judge wants, it seems, so. Oh. <clears throat> Dear me. For Virginia, a lot is at stake. Success will mean she can finally leave her job. The winner will not only go to Sydney, but also be invited to sing at Auckland's Opera in the Park. And the person I thought would do that best was Brent Alcock. Yeah, didn't really have a good feeling about tonight. You know, I, I tend to trust fate an awful lot, and I usually have a fairly accurate sort of feeling about the way things are going to go. And um, unfortunately, it didn't work tonight. I mean, not winning tonight's not a hurdle. It's just, you know, it would have been a help. But no, no, I'll do it anyway. Because, I mean, I've got, I've got the work, and I've got, I know I've got the ability, and I've got the drive. So, no, I'll do it. Question is whether I've got the money to do it, but. You know, um, no, no, it's not a hurdle. It's just a bit of a nuisance, that's all. Was I ben and Simon are dreaming of singing in the final of the Sydney Aria competition. The stakes are high. Previous winners include Kira Takanawa. Impressive singers are instantly picked up by opera companies. But the competition is fierce. There are over 120 competitors and three rounds to get through before the final. Tonight, standard is really superior. It's uh, amazing to sit down and just be entertained all night. That's what I'm here for. I've been a couple of other nights and just sit down and be entertained, suss out the competition. I just usually go home in a state of depression, but it's all right. Yeah. done with. Finish. <laughs> yeah, I, I was pleased I got through it all right. Um, I thought that I lacked a, lot, a bit of breath on the high notes. It lacked um, substance somewhat. I think it was loud enough, but it sort of could have been uh, better. But Oh, well, if I get another go at doing it, I'll do it better, I think, hopefully. <laughs> Amor, no, se no ve libertad, 
Basically, I just sort of went out and just did my best and put it all sort of 100 percent, well, more than 100 percent performance in there. So I really got in and sock it to them. <laughs> and you went, and you think it went well? Yeah, um, I think I'm the only one that sort of tapped into the audience response because I saw everyone smiling and laughing at all my gestures and that. I think it's one of those songs that it, yes, definitely it pulls on the, the audience and mm. yeah. Mm. Congratulations to the following people from this evening's heat. Number 67, Sandra Partridge. 108, Zara Hollis. 103, Benjamin Marchese. And 116, Rosario La Spina. Congratulations to those. I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get in. I might have sung a bit out of tune, as it said in the old uh, report, but I didn't know that. <laughs> and uh, it said so many times, opera's the winner. Well, I don't think so. I think they're a bunch of wankers. <laughs> Singing is really fantastic. It's um, sort of, I'm really quite onto it at the moment, and a lot of focus and discipline is, is involved being here. I think it's because it's a huge competition that you need to put a lot more effort in and, and, and make more time to, to concentrate and discipline yourself. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to, if, well, hoping to get into the finals because um, the finals is a lot more going for you as well. There'll be a lot more audience, there'll be a bigger audience, and you'll have a lot of the potential, um, you know, uh, influential people in Australia coming in to listen to these, the, the top eight finalists. And I think it, it'd be, um, exciting to be singing at the Opera House as well for the f very first time. If you really feel that you're short of breath there, don't make a big red as you yeah. did before. Just, you know, you know, and then we, then we have a break. The semi-final. Out of 25, only eight will go on to sing at the Opera House.
was just like all boiling up inside and so many times I was doing things trying to control it really because you because at the same time you've got butterflies in your stomach and you're just so nervous and you're trying to unwind and just be really free and easy it just it, it, that whole combination of just trying to, to control it In the end, nerves get the better of him, and Ben doesn't go on to the final. I was uh, a bit shocked and a bit devastated, but it happens, and so you have to just pick yourself up and just tell yourself, you know, go on to the next best thing, you know, keep going. Yeah, rang up my mother and um, talked to her. She was, like, crying. But, I mean, you know, that's life. And she sort of said, well, you know, we'll be saying prayers for you. I've learned that it's uh, all to do with incentives and goals. Like, I've got a goal next year. I want to make the first cut, at least. <laughs> I want to win it. No, no, I would like to get, you know. It's, it's good, man. It's good to come out and find out what the real world's like you've got to fight your way through and sometimes that's very painful experience for people and often not to our nature here too but you have to develop a ruthlessness you know you do have to if you want to succeed and you have to sit it out and there are no easy ways to do that it's one year since the summer school and Virginia has moved up from the chorus to a small part in a production of Katja Cabanova in Wellington She has finally been able to give up her job and can now pursue her dream. It's been interesting sort of change in, in life, basically, lifestyle, sort of not doing a nine to five and trying to sing as well. So that's done my voice a lot of good. But it makes it, it makes it feel like you're actually getting somewhere when you're actually getting some work rather than sort of forever trading around just doing competitions or, you know, doing the, the student -y sort of thing. Finally, it's, it's actually professional work coming up, which is great. Back in New Zealand, Ben and Simon are still doing concerts. Both have decided to go to New York for six months' study. Ben with support from the Dame Malvina Major Foundation. I'm going to New York. I'm going to be training there for like five to six months with um, vocal, expert vocal tutors and language tutors um, and spending time in Indiana with uh, men in Virginia Ziani, yeah. If you put in the dedication, the sweat, and the hard work into it, um, it pays off. It pays off in the end, really. And now we have for you a great new talent from Wellington. A great Auckland welcome for Simon O'Neill. Simon finally got his big chance, singing before the biggest audience ever assembled in New Zealand. Over 300,000 people at Opera in the Park. It was my 15 minutes of fame, which lasted three hours. It was, it was amazing. Walking down the steps, I was more scared of tripping over down the steps to actually sing rather than uh, not being able to get my top note at the end. I could have mucked it up badly. I could have really embarrassed myself, and if I did that, well... <laughs> but I think it's uh, New York. To get good, then come back and do it better next time. I've got the chance to go. I've got a loan from the bank. And my parents will be probably mortgaging the house, or well, they will be actually. So I'm going to leave and I'm going to do it by myself. I give them the idea always to go for a moment, I don't say forever, but for a few years, for two years, three years, four years, to go out, to see the world, and then to come here to refresh the world of opera here in New Zealand. I want to be really good. I want to be able to sing roles and people say, now that's how the role is to be sung. It's exhilarating, yes, and of course that's the, the passion, I suppose, that makes you want to go on and on. It's what you strive for all the time, the, the excellence. <laughs> 